delighted that, uh, that you're having this herring festival. I really think, you know, one of the things that indigenous people have, have taught me is the importance of ceremony. Ceremony in our, our prayers, our songs, our dance, um, that reaffirm the things that really matter in our lives, especially our connection with Mother Earth. And it doesn't, uh, it doesn't surprise me that we tend to, you know, have our ceremonies around important people, I guess, like kings and queens and, and people like that. But to celebrate the parts of, our, of where we are uh, this way is wonderful. I think we ought to have blueberry festivals and cedar festivals and all kinds of things that remind us of uh, the things around us that matter. Look, the, the oceans are a mess. You know, the oceans are, the, are where everything ends up. Um, if you're a, a farmer, whatever you're using on your fields ends up in the oceans. And so we have more and bigger uh, dead zones, which, uh, um, you know, where nothing can live. They're getting more frequent, bigger and lasting longer. Of course, we've all heard that there is now more weight of plastic in the oceans than living fish. And of course, um, uh, we're uh, depleting the oceans by uh, uh, our effective ways of, of targeting uh, big fish like, like sharks. Um, our, our techniques and our demands on the oceans have begun, become too great. The problem I think we have on the West Coast is that uh, we are having our resources managed from Ottawa. They've screwed up the fishery on the East Coast and they certainly are doing the same thing on the West Coast. We did, a, the David Suzuki Foundation years ago did a study called Fisheries That Work. And around the world, there are examples of fisheries that have been sustained for dozens of years, if not centuries. And when you look at them, you find that invariably the responsibility and the accountability for caring for the resources is local. The local people with an interest are the ones who manage it. You can't manage it from Ottawa. But there's an even more profound uh, uh, problem we have a political system in which we elect people to office by voting and they then become responsible for the people that vote, you know, and that's why there's so much concern before elections come to get at the voters and tell them all the wonderful things politicians have done. But those most profoundly affected by what politicians do or do not do, don't vote. Children don't vote. Future generations don't vote. The ocean doesn't vote. The atmosphere doesn't vote. Rivers, lakes, forests, they don't vote. And yet they are going to be profoundly impacted. I think that, you know, and the way that we try to manage, there's so much pressure on, uh, on Ottawa to manage according to the economic needs and the political needs of vested interest groups that um, they never manage on the basis of biology. They never manage on the basis of the bigger system. The oceans are a mess. Within that, uh, most of the fish are a mess. Um, most of the water is a mess. Uh, I've had long discussions with the Minister of Fisheries and Oceans over fish farms saying, look, it's not that I'm against fish farms, but for heaven's sakes, when the ocean is a mess, why do you continue to use it as a garbage can with open nets? Put them into closed containments if you're going to have fish farms, for heaven's sakes. But no, we can't do that because of the economy, the economics of it apparently uh, militate against that. And the other thing is that what, what we find is that we tend to try to deal with problems on a, a piecemeal basis 
you know, uh, it's it's like um, there, caribou are one of the iconic species in Canada, and virtually every caribou herd in Canada is now at risk. For one thing, they need a lot of space. They're they're an animal that is constantly on the move, and we're not willing to give them uh, that space. But as caribou populations plummet, what do we do? We say, oh. Caribou are disappearing, never looking in the mirror to see the biggest predator. Wolves eat caribou. So if we kill wolves, then we'll manage uh, the caribou and they should bounce. That is the dumbest, the most stupid way of trying to manage an animal uh, like a caribou. But that's the way we do it. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's the same thing. Our orca are, are in trouble. Oh, well, uh, the southern residents are in, in bad shape. Southern residents, most of the uh, fish they eat are Chinook. So we've got to try to replenish the Chinook population, never asking why the Chinook population's uh, down, never asking, well, what about all the transportation that is deafening them with all of this noise? Uh, what about the area that they need to roam on, on their own, untrammeled by human beings? What about the logging practices? No, no, no. Well, uh, we're going to try to amplify the, the Chinook salmon. We'll do that by stopping the, the, the fishery on that. You know, we don't have a selective commercial fishery that can only target Chinook, but we say those sport fishers, you know, they're the, we'll get them to cut back. This is, again, the stupidest thing. Meanwhile, we're allowing a commercial fishery for herring. Wait a minute now, what do the salmon eat? Hmm, I wonder whether the herring have anything to do with it. I mean, it's absolutely absurd. I, uh, we have um, uh, a cabin on Quadra Island and one of our neighbors was a man named Dan LeClaire who'd lived uh, on Quadra now, I think for 60 years or so. And he used, he's, he's dead now, but he, he used to tell us that when he was a kid, He'd go out in a punt in Hyacinth Bay, where our house, our cabin is, and uh, with a rake, he would fill the punt with herring in 15 minutes. They were really abundant. That's the baseline, it seems to me. That's before there was an industrial um, commercial fishery for herring. And that's the way it was all up and down the coast. The uh, DFO finally allowed the commercial fishery to come in. They had one season when the uh, saners came in and took the herring in, in uh, Hyacinth Bay. They have never come back. We've had our cabin now on Quadra for over 25 years. Only once our little bay by our cabin turned white with milt from spawning herring. And we were so excited. And I thought maybe this is a sign, but they've never come back again. So, you know, this idea, I know DFO's uh, policy is based on this theory or idea that what you have is large interbreeding populations, so you can deplete a little over here, but they'll be replenished. I think we ought to listen to people who've known about the herring and their populations for thousands of years. Their survival depended on it. My... Uh, my son-in-law is working on his PhD now on uh, uh, comparing indigenous management with uh, modern um, management through DFO. And he says that when they go in these digs through uh, communities like, uh, or areas like Quadra, when they dig down into a, a site, one of the most common bones that they find are herring. Herring were a vital part of the, of the diet of indigenous people for, uh, for a long time. And uh, the way, and they tell us, look, the herring are depleted and uh, you know, they're objecting to the, uh, to the industrial uh, take. And of course, if you go to Bella Bella, the, the Hiltzik have been using traditional means where you don't kill the fish, you simply impound them, get them to lay their eggs and uh, release them again. It's, um, I mean, there are artisanal ways of, of uh, getting herring, but of course what's driving it now is economics. The fleet, the fleet is, uh, means there's a, a massive investment in the boats. And so when you shut down the, uh, 
the, the, the fishery, of course, you've got all of these assets then that are stranded. It's like the tar sands. You can't shut it down because of the huge uh, investment in the, uh, in the technology. So I, um, I hope as you celebrate herring, we realize that the, the baseline that we use for, um, uh, for DFO's policies and uh, quotas that they're setting are way too shallow that the baseline has to go back uh, maybe a uh, hundred years or more um, to, to get an idea of what we have to aim for uh, in the coming years. The herring have been radically depleted all up and down the coast and uh, they've got to, uh, we've got to give them a break. We need a, a moratorium, who knows how long, but stop the industrial commercial fishery. It's very, very clear.